I want to talk to you a little bit about an anime called Nia Under Seven. This is a weird one. Uh, it is one of my personal favorites um, for a couple of reasons. The Much of the staff behind it worked on Serial Experiments Lane, one of my favorite anime of all time. And uh, it's a wacky comedy until suddenly in moments it isn't. Um, it is put, uh, it is set in a more or less present time when aliens have crash landed on the planet. Um, but uh, one of them is uh, freeloading with uh, the main character. Uh, this is Nia herself, the freeloading under alien uh, who is living with Mayuko here. Um, let's see if I can get a better shot of him. There's Mayuko, a uh, hardworking Ronin. She failed her college entrance exam and is now living as a broke college student just trying to get by. And what's fascinating about Nia to me is how many different faces it shows. Um, on the one hand, it is a sort of a spastic comedy. On the one hand, it is very much about a certain time in your life. Um, a friend of mine said that um, he has never seen an anime so perfectly capture being a broke college student as well as Nia Under Seven does. And Nia um, is very much about that. It is very much about living that, that life, uh, despite having some very weird things. Let's see if I can find something. Um, so yeah, um, uh, Mayuko there goes to a cram school with uh, a friend of hers, um, and it kind of has to live with the embarrassment of Nia constantly embarrassing her. Um, and one of the things I love about this, this show is how much it is about not just um, that, but also about the fact that Mayuko lives in this small rural town in Japan. Uh, this came out in, I think, the year 2000, 2001. So before a lot of the, the big modern trends around you know, small towns really shrinking and, and all that kind of stuff, but those were just on the horizon. So you're seeing these just really small town things. And I'll see if I can get a good uh, image there of what it's like living in just this um, let's see here. There we go. Um, uh, just living in this small town and, and Mayuko kind of doing the best she can with things. Um, I'm not choosing the best, uh, uh moments here, clearly. Uh, some weird things happen in this, in this OVA. Um, that's not it either. One second. There we go. So there's, yeah, there's a lot of, uh, elements here of just very small town life. Uh, Mayuko has to work multiple jobs to um, to make ends meet, and she uh, <laughs> uh, she lives in a bathhouse. Now, this is by the, the Lane staff. So when I say she lives in a bathhouse, there is exactly one sequence where she takes a bath, and in that sequence, you see like her and everybody else from like this point up. Like there's no nudity whatsoever in this in this. Uh, anime that I can recall it um, at all. Thank you, uh, JJ. Uh, year 2000 when this came out. Um, so it hits on a lot of different things and a lot of different elements of life and experiences. Um, and it's something that that staff is very good at. Um, if you've seen Hibane Renme, uh, you, know, you know they can do comedy and drama and character growth and lots of things all at once. Uh, Lane also, uh, certainly. And it's fun seeing a staff that is big on, that, that is known for more psychological, um, more uh, character-driven stuff, uh, stuff that's you know, deep and complex, tackle a comedy uh, and do so in a way that, that still plays to their strengths, that still feels like um, you're there, that still feels like you can appreciate where these people are and, and where they live. Now, I should point out, um, I'll see if I can find the opening credit sequence here. Um, this might be one of those things where they, they skip out. No, there we go. Um, love the opening credits on this, too. Um, uh, Nia Under Seven. Let's see if I can find the opening. Um, uh, so you can get a little bit of the opening credits uh, here. I just want to show you the opening um, um, the, the logo, the, uh, the actual subtitle Nia Under 7 is a domestic poor animation. And, uh, unfortunately VLC is not wanting to do that. Oh, it's, it's, 
it's frozen up. Okay. Um, and that is very intentional. You know, anime is a very cheap medium um, in terms of just the amount of money that can go into it. And um, this is made at a time when anime budgets were particularly small. So they very much conserve their animation. Uh, this is not a lushly animated uh, series by any uh, uh, stroke of the imagination. But when they're doing over-the-top comedy, they, they put the frames into that. Um, and what I particularly like is the, the attention to facial expression, um, the attention to emotive acting. Um, I felt like I understood Mayuko. I felt like I could see her inner workings and what she was struggling with. Um, there's a, there, again, there's a depth to this series, despite all the silliness. Um, and if VLC will cooperate, which I don't think it will, um, this really comes across in episode four. And I don't want to get into any spoilers, um, but for me, episode four is where a lot of the themes of the show come together. Um, a lot of the soul of the show uh, it's it's really its heart, uh, what it's trying to get across, its emotions, um, and its values really come across well in episode four, uh, which is a quiet episode, really, um, which is about various characters interacting. Uh, and again, it's, it's kind of remarkable that a show can take a simple episode where Mayuko is just um, kind of hanging out at this one spot and turn it into a character study in, in a really uh, just fascinating way. Um, so yeah, I, I love Nia Under 7. I just love this series. Um, in spite of, and perhaps because of, all of the, um, limitations that the staff had going into it. Um, this is clearly not a show that was ever going to be hugely successful. Um, it's just too weird, um, and it's too niche, really. But that's one of the reasons why I think it works so well, because it is very much of a piece. It is very much trying to do its own thing. Um, and as such, I think um, it's charming in its own way.